Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I did the outline and underdrawing and why each stage is a relaxing joy to do. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, so I'm just going to quickly explain to you how I achieved that actual background. Now this is the image that I had from my nephew Russell. It, it was a full image with his brother behind him, but obviously I just wanted to do a single portrait of him. So I wanted a dramatic background in there, because it looks a bit like a Viking, you see, so I thought I'd put a Norway scene in there or something. Um, so what I did, I just got me rubber tools which I created if I just take this off here I created that by rubbing it out and then what I did I used a stamp tool so I've extended the shadows there just doing this quickly just to show you what I did this is the actual landscape I got from Pixabay so it's royalty free then I put Russell's layer on top of it so that's just a very very quick idea what I did Right, I'm doing this freehand, so just finding the centre point of my board and then I'll place a centre point in my reference image. It's scaled up to 14 inch by 11 inch. So basically what I'm doing from that centre point, I'm using imaginary angles to start with, getting the big shape of the head in. So going around the edge, getting a feel for where the position of it is. Just placing the lines in very finely and just using a grip quite a distance away from that point just to keep everything nice and loose and using a, a kneadable razor there which is the faber castell kneadable razor it's amazing to have in your kit that is and then just basically just getting these angles where the nose is the bottom of the nose where the eyes and just feel your way through the gray pencil i'm using is a carbothello 708 now I've mentioned this in a lot of my videos, but it's really important, I feel, to have your reference image small enough so you can see the whole thing. And that creates a feeling of the energy more, and it helps to see the shapes more clearly as well, because you can see everything as a whole. And I always try and create a feeling of wholeness to my work, rather than separate things. So having it small enough to see the whole of the image is, is to, for me is really important so as you can see there I did the nose and the mouth and the, the moustache of the beard first before starting to move on to the other areas so before I do the eyes now I've got to make sure that everything seems to be in the correct sort of size relation it's a case of just letting go open the heart connect to the energy of the person you draw in and just let it flow and you'll feel this joy come from within. The awareness is to actually see it from inside yourself. So allow that image to go inside you, into your heart, rather than looking at it and focusing on it and looking at every detail because you'll find then you're, you're outside of yourself and, and you're in your head it makes it so you're sort of more um, focused outside always try to be inside and just relax and that's a key thing really I've established the top of the head the nose and the mouth and the side of the face now so I've checked the sort of measurements were there and now I'm focusing on one eye first now the second eye is always the awkward one just slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I use the pencil on the vertical plane to check the image against the reference image and that's a good way of actually finding the location of things. It's similar to what you would do if you were drawing something from life. This is the same technique as I use when I draw from life. So as well as doing this vertical plane, I'm still aware of the location by spreading my awareness. So I'm, I'm sensing the corner of the other eye, I'm sensing where the eyebrow is. 
and it's all about just sort of connecting to the whole thing and being in balance totally all the time every moment and don't separate anything always keep it as a whole and then you find it just develops and it sort of just appears on its own <laughs> it's hard to put in words really it, the more you let go of trying to control the more it will just happen for you just line it down to real time again just to show you the other method i do uh, as, along with using the horizontal plane and the vertical plane i'm using a measurement by placing my finger and thumb on the pencil where i've got the point is one measurement and the thumb is the other and then i'm comparing that with the actual reference image and making sure that i've got the same sort of measurement i also check the depth of something against the width of something so i'm just comparing it to whatever is on that reference image and then comparing your drawing to see if this is the same if you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos just speeding it up now, now I've covered all the bases of it. Um, just a case of just uh, doing the same as what I've just explained uh, and just keeping that vision open and aware. I tend to like to put the highlight on the pupil as well, just a little bit of white there, it just helps with the actual feeling of the portrait. If you notice as well, I'm using the eraser as a tool as well. I'm almost like sculpturing the shapes with it. So it doesn't matter if you put the, the line down wrong, you can just erase it and make it a sharper line or whatever. So it gives you that freedom just to express yourself without worrying about getting the precise line in straight away. It's just a case of always comparing imaginary lines and doing this completely right through the painting, right even when you're doing the details, it's a constant feeling of not being afraid to change. That's why the freehand is so wonderful to do because it makes it so it's more flexible. Slant it down to real time now so you can see I've used an oil painting brush to f measure the width against the height as well. Um, just because obviously the pencil is not long enough, I'm just showing you how I use other things to measure it. So it's another a great way to make sure that everything's in proportion, is just getting the overall size right. Right, just getting a bit conscious of the time on this uh, outline part of the video. Uh, I just want to leave some more space so I can do a lot more free time in the underdrawing. So just quickly showing you here how I've completed it. Now onto the underdrawing, here's the colour pencils I'll be using for that. Just a simple chalky pencils mostly. I've only got one Caran Dash there, which is the dark green. The rest are chalky pencils, which are Carbothello and Conti of Paris. Now the idea of the underdrawing is to correct the outline. So we're correcting the outline by creating form, but very simply. So I'm laying down the white first, more pressure where it's lighter, less pressure where it's mid-tone. And then what I'll do then is glaze over then with red and yellow ochre initially. And then I'll change it up with a bit of blue, brown and other colours as you see as I go along. For the shadow areas I'm using dark green with red just to desaturate that red. It creates a natural shadow. So if you ever want to do a shadow of a colour, just use the complementary colour. So if it's more orangey colour, use blue. If it's more red, use green and so on. You notice I'm still measuring the vertical plane and horizontal plane because this is freehand. I'm checking everything, making sure everything feels okay. But with doing the form, it creates more energy and more sort of feeling. So you can just change things slightly just to give it that sort of more impact. Now for the white of the eyes, I tend to use these two colours, which are orange and blue, which are complementary colours, so they make really nice blue greys. Really nice for the white of the eyes and also teeth. What I find joyful about the underdrawing stage is that 
it's a chance to be really loose and to move things around and be free flowing with it. You're not really focusing on the details. It's just about putting things into the correct place, moving things around and you're really connecting to the energy. Even at these early stages, you're really feeling the soul of the person and bringing them that forward because when you start putting the rich colours on and the details, which will be part two of the next video I'll bring out, so all this preparation will merge with the next stage. Now I'm using brown and blue for the dark areas in the eyes. I'll probably use black in the next stages, but for this preparation, for the underdrawing, just use brown and, and blue. Now for the shadow areas, the darker areas, I'm using the brown and red along with the green and cold red as well so you're mixing two together really but like i say it's just the underdrawing so you're not really fussed about getting the values right or the chroma all it is is about getting the shape and the idea of the placement of things correctly just adding blue just to cool that warm red down a little in that area Now for the moustache of the beard, I'm just using the white to map out where I feel the, the strands of hair is going to be. Uh, just like anything else, just using that white first and glaze over the top. I'm trying to work on the whole, so I'll do a little bit of the, the moustache there and then go and do the, the mouth and to see how that feels against that area I've just done. So I'm working on several different areas just trying to get sort of a balance so when I work on one area it'll help me with the balance on another again here just using the white just to shape the direction of the hairs so it's a bit of a real time here just to show you how I go about it because all this can be glazed over the top you see and it makes that white I'm putting down will shine through the colour then and to give it more chroma but for this stage, I'm not really interested in the chroma so much. It's more just getting the drawing right, like I say. So you can just relax, enjoy the freedom of moving these things around and just play with it, really. It's really great to do because you can be really loose with it. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for their wonderful support every month. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. It makes all the difference. If you're interested in joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. Now it's a really good price. It's only £4 a month and that will give you access to every video on there at the moment and it grows with two videos every month so please check it out if you're interested just lay it down in real time so you can see me using the yellow ochre there then the warm red and then to desaturate that red I'm using an olive green color which desaturates it creates a natural shadow just speeding this up again because I'm getting conscious of the time and I want to spend a little bit of time explaining the hair and the beard how I did that as well for the underdrawing. If you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. So just putting it in a nutshell then with drawing the skin tone it's just a matter of putting the white down then glazing with yellow ochre, warm red and then desaturate the red with the green and use an occasional blue. Right onto the hair then, so just using brown first and then again just using the white to map out the area, it's sort of like technique with everything really, just using that white, map it out. I'm using blue, yellow ochre and brown for the hair, basic colours really, it creates greys and then occasionally I glaze over with a bit of burnt sienna as well. So I've just put the background in rough. It's just the colour there, Just it doesn't have to be like the background, it's just to separate it a little bit from the head and the hair. Now I'm using the pencil again vertical to find the correct placement 
of certain parts of the hair you can find a block of shadow you can find the edge of that shadow then mark them see whereabouts it lines up on the face it might be side of the nose or side of the eye or wherever it could be and then you just place that mark accordingly Now there's loads of subtlety in colour in the hair but I'm just keeping it basic by just using the brown and the white just to sculpture it. Now I've really got to be loose with the hair and don't worry too much about it being exactly the same position all these different strands. I try and keep it a similar pattern so I don't get lost in it. It makes it easier to do the colours and the subtleties afterwards. Even though I'm just doing the hair I'm still aware of everything else in the actual portrait so I'm, I'm connecting to this, his face, his energy just to make sure there's a feeling of oneness there because there's a tendency if you're not careful to focus too much on the hair and put too much detail in it and then it can throw the eye off so you have to sort of always be aware of that the focus point would be on the eyes and the soul of the person Now for the beard, it can be overwhelming if you let it be. Uh, the reason it gets overwhelming is if you overthink it. To keep that joy there is, like I've mentioned, is to keep yourself in the heart. So allow that image to come into you rather than you go out to it. So draw it into you and then that will keep you calm and then just relax and just keep making sort of key points you know using your pencil vertically again it's all about getting a flow and getting the movement there's, there's like a movement to it if you open your awareness to that so the flow of it the movement you, you get those angles right then you can, you can get that sort of feeling of flowing and then you sort of get lost into it and they can mark these sort of key areas up in the white first and then just glaze over with the different colours over the top. Always best to keep your underdrawing very light as well, don't go too heavy with the pastel because you need to keep that tooth there for when you start putting that richer colour on. Um, so everything's done very lightly what you see here uh, and just glazing just very roughly. Uh, it's just getting a feel for to what needs to be done um, and like I say we're not interested in getting the value the chroma or anything or even the accuracy of the details all that will be done in the next video hope you've enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching it right till the end if you're interested in seeing more of my work just check out these links here